when someone tells me he still believes in NASA. Don't call me. Don't come by my house. We're done. So y'all have to check this out. Watch. This is lightning coming through the firmament. Look at that. That's what you call sprites. Look at this. Check this out. Look, it gets more intense. Watch. Look at that. Like, look. What in the... Look at that. Does, it, does that look like... Like water? Look at this. Look. It's like... Bursting out of something. Look. Like a barrier wall? Firmament? Like, look at that. It's like... It's like coming down. Look at this. Look at that. What in the... Have you guys ever seen this before? Look at that. It's like bursting. Look at this. So these things are called sprites. It's almost like this, like a geyser, but like flipped upside down. Like, look at this. Like, does this look the same? Look at that. Hey, NASA employees are living in a simulation and I have proof. And even during simulations, it's not just an exercise. The simulations seem as real as the mission. It's true, the director of NASA Mission Control makes sure that employees can't tell the difference between a simulation and the real mission. Pause and read his quote directly. It's understandable back in the Apollo days because all of Mission Control is just a bunch of data on the screens. I wouldn't be able to tell the difference between a simulation and a real mission if this is all I had besides this real footage. Fast forwarding to today, not much has changed. Just a bunch of data on the screens and we got one view which they launch from Cape Canaveral toward the Bermuda Triangle. Then once the rocket gets to a certain height, it just turns into like a video game for Mission Control. During interviews of Mission Control, they really only show you just a little bit, but here's an interior shot of the ISS. I could take you there right now on Earth. There's a full mock-up of the International Space Station in Houston, Texas. Google Earth, Johnson Space Center. Click right there on Street View. It'll take you right inside of the International Space Station. Now look at this. I'm going to venture on through and show you a specific part that will really blow your mind. Okay? I want you to look at these stickers, patches, and signatures on the wall. Now get a mental picture of this. Now look at this supposed tour of the ISS while in orbit. I want you to look. See those and the signatures? Now, let's get a close look at the two compared to each other. This is from inside the mock-up, and this is from the tour supposedly in orbit. Now compare the two. What? Well, what about exterior shots of the ISS? You can't fake that. They're in space. Well, check out the blue tint. I'll show you the Neutral Buoyancy Lab. Here is Mission Control at the Neutral Buoyancy Lab, which is a giant Olympic swimming pool with an entire mock-up of the exterior of the International Space Station down under. Now they have a lot of scuba divers, a lot of cameras, a lot of green screens, and a lot of baloney happening right in this area. But they have a live ISS feed, and I track it with my phone. Does the live feed look something like this? Well, is this from the ISS or a weather balloon? It's a weather balloon with a GoPro lens. Now, I agree something's up there, but I don't think it's 250 miles away, the size of a football field, and following the curvature of space-time. Check out my pinned video on unconventional propulsion systems if you want to know what I think it could be. Because when we see it, it's not much smaller than this. Remember, the truth is the truth, whether you believe it or not. A lie needs your permission and your participation to even exist. And the only one place that a lie can exist is in the minds of those who are foolish enough to believe it. Back to you, Mission Control. We have men in simulations. They're in the simulator. They're not flying up to the moon. But we feel like they're real. You feel like they're real, but do you think that the entire space program, as you view it in your work, has a sense of unreality to it? I think the atmosphere you work in is a little bit unreal as far as the, the actual facilities are concerned. You're totally isolated. You're surrounded by machines. There are no windows in the buildings where you work. The lighting is always the same. You 
lose all track of time. So you won't proof the earth's flat. Well, I'm about to give you a little bit. Every time somebody posts a flat earth video, there's always somebody in the comments, oh, show us a picture from a satellite. Oh, that's not real. I hate to break some of y'all's hearts, but that ain't either. I already know this ain't gonna be good enough for some of y'all, and some of you gonna twist it and do whatever, but anyway, I'm gonna show you a couple Bible verses. First Chronicles 16:30. Tremble before him, all the earth. The world is firmly established. It cannot be moved. It cannot be moved. Yet it's blasting through space at 67,000 miles an hour, and we're all able to still stand on it. Isaiah 40:22. He sits enthroned above the circle of the earth, and his people are like grasshoppers. He stretches out the heavens like a canopy and spreads them out like a tent to live in. I know a couple of Bible verses ain't gonna be good enough for some of y'all, kinda like this whole map right here wasn't good enough. For this guy, Wes Weaver 375 right here that got in my comments yesterday, it's, he's referring to my map. It's a 2D rendering of the spherical earth. You see my response to that? Yeah, we landed on the moon, Oswald did Kennedy, all dogs go to heaven and the government has your best interest at heart. Believe that if y'all want to. There is much, much more that I plan to share with y'all. If you are ready for irrefutable proof that the entire ocean is flat and level, look no further than the railgun, which uses an electromagnetic pulse to send a three quarter ounce projectile 17,000 feet per second and can hit a target 100 miles away. What's interesting is that when you look at the physics, you only have to elevate the barrel of the railgun 1.69 degrees if it is mounted 80 feet high on top of a battleship or destroyer. So typically 80 feet high, you have an angle of 1.69 degrees. And get this, when the projectile hits the target, it's actually 34 feet higher than its starting point. 34 feet higher than its starting point. So if you look up a easy to find curvature calculator, an earth curvature calculator, there are plenty online, and you input 100 miles as the distance, the curvature should be 6,600 feet of drop. You guys need to listen to the people that actually operate this equipment, that are on ships, that understand trajectory and ballistics and bullet drop. Also a correction, the tungsten projectile that is fired from a railgun weighs three quarters of a pound. Three quarters of a pound and travels 17,000 feet per second. It is mounted on a destroyer, typically 80 feet above the ocean surface, right? The top of the ocean and it only requires a 1.69 degree barrel elevation to hit a target 100 miles away. If you read the description in the original video, all of the calculations are provided. It was done by AI and AI could not calculate eight inches per mile squared and relate that to bullet drop. When the tungsten projectile reaches the target, 100 miles away, the projectile is actually 34 feet higher from where it was fired. And if you look at a curvature calculator at 100 miles, at eight inches per mile squared, using spherical trigonometry, if we live on a magical spinning water ball, then at eight, at, at eight, eight inches per mile squared at 100 miles, you're looking at 6,600 feet of drop. Are you guys telling me that this projectile fired at 100 miles is going to arc and drop 6,600 feet from the ship from which it was fired? I can't help you. 
we try, but I just feel like this is our club and you ain't in it. Let me show you this telescope. Look at that thing. It's massive. This is the Celestron Edge HD 11. Those are, that's 30 pounds of counterweights. That's a 20 and a 10 pound counterweight. This is CGX map. So right there, serious. This is just uh, raw video mode. Look at that thing. Kind of reminds me of like a like a hole in a black uh, background, light shining through. But except for it looks like light shining through water. Look at that. It's not actually spinning. That's just the optical illusion. Um, created by the light, you know, passing through a, a large body of water. Just like when you're, you know, under the water on the beach or in a swimming pool and you look up at the sun, same exact effect. Look at that. It's incredible. When I was a little kid, I asked my dad, if countries are at war with each other all the time, then how come every four years they get together and play games at the Olympics? That doesn't make any sense. Why would they do that? And he didn't have an answer, but it's funny because little kids know, man, it makes no sense. I'm sorry, but if all these countries hate each other and they're all at war with each other, they're not going to put their differences aside every four years to play games. That's ridiculous. So, I mean, that's just one more, one more proof of nonsense. Not to mention, you know, the Antarctic Treaty was signed by all the countries in the whole world so that no one can do anything in Antarctica. So they were all able to get together and sign this treaty. Don't you think they would all be able to get together and lie to you? Because I do. I'm at the point now, I don't believe in countries anymore. I believe we have owners because it can pretty much be proven. I mean, BlackRock and Vanguard basically own the whole world. So we have owners and I don't think we have countries. We have dividers. We have jails that we're all in that we're not allowed to leave without passports and licenses and certificates and all sorts of stuff. It's a scam. But this is for your entertainment. And I love you all. My Nikon P1000, 93 million miles away. Y'all check this out. Looky there, huh? Pretty neat how a simple camera can zoom in this far on the sun. And what y'all are gonna say is, oh, well, it's just so big, you can never understand my... Dude, 93 million miles away? Hey, that's... Bruh, look at that. I mean, if that's, okay, so, anyways, yeah, y'all get the point. Looks really cool, Don. Check it out. Dang. Looks like something under a microscope, don't it? That's that laser Nikon P1000 right there, son. Whoa, whoa! I'm sorry, but these flight paths are making no sense if we live on a supposed globe. So let me try to make this as easy as possible. Let's try going from South Africa to Australia. We should be able to make it in one go, right over the Indian Ocean, if we live on the supposed globe. Alrighty, so here we have Johannesburg, South Africa to Perth, Australia. Let's hit search. All right, let's do, let's do one stop. Okay, can anybody make sense of this? So we go from Johannesburg to Dubai, what? And then Dubai to Australia? Like, um, that's a little strange. So hold on, let me make sense of this. We go from Johannesburg to Dubai, then to Australia, like, um, why didn't we do this? I mean, after all, this is what we live on, right? 
But when you take a look at it on the Gleason's map, which all pilots use by the way, we have Johannesburg, South Africa, Dubai, then Perth, Australia. Look at this. Wow. So it makes perfect sense on the Gleason's map. Absolutely no sense if we live on a globe. Why didn't we do this? I'm sorry, but that is just one of the strangest things. Johannesburg, Dubai, then Australia. Wow. I mean, what else is there to say? Hey, Tic Tac. <laughs> Have y'all seen the new movie with Scarlett Johansson and Channing Tatum called Fly Me to the Moon? It's coming out soon, right? <laughs> They're trying to say that, of course, we didn't go to the moon. You know, it was a, 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 a space race in, in, you know, against Russia for national security. Like, duh, you didn't know that. <laughs> what are we talking about, dude? Like, this is just damage control. This is panic. This is TikTok getting banned. This is over a billion flat earth and truth views. That's just what this is, bro. They are panicking. They're trying to brainwash people who have not been looking into this, people who are asleep, people who are too distracted with the slave system that is not reality. And they're just trying to manipulate you again. So now everyone's figuring out what we didn't go to the moon. Duh, duh. We can't. We never have and we never will land on the moon. So now it's like, well, dude, it was dude, national security. You're just too, you just don't understand. You're too ignorant to understand the, the how serious that is. Like, dude, stop. It doesn't make any sense. They've been caught. They're in damage control. They're panicking. Nobody's ever been to the moon. It's not even a joke. The own astronauts, Buzz Aldrin, he's coming out a million times that we never went. We never went to the... Guys, the gig's up. It's over, dude. It's over. No matter how many movies you make saying, oh, no, uh, all right, so, all right, so we were lying, but no, all right, so we're, all right, yeah, we're lying, but we're not lying because of why you said there's no way it was had to do with all the profit we gained and all, it had nothing to do with that. <laughs> Save it. <laughs> Come on, guys. Stay vigilant. Look at that. Completely flat. Flat Earth. Yeah. The Flat Earth map dates back over 1,000 years. This map is credited to being created by a Persian astronomer. His name was Al-Biruni and he lived between 973 AD to 1048 AD. It's the official map of the United Nations and also the United States Geological Survey. It used to be present in many places before the creation of NASA and the Antarctic Treaty in 1959. Here you see it with Admiral Byrd. This map has been restored by Dmitri, from Russia, with suggestions of mine, Idia Lenkar. Known by my YouTube channel Flat Earth Benjo, I asked Dmitri to include the Bermuda Triangle, and Point Nemo, a place deep in the Pacific where NASA buries rockets. Then Robert Tuzzi, a professional mapmaker came along and enhanced the map even more. There are many people now selling this map online, but if you could order it from my online store, I would greatly appreciate it. Visit my online store now and order one of the items. I humbly thank you.